Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be making a porch sign where we can change from different seasons and holidays and there will be eight changeables. So let's get into the video. First we're going to start with making our um, eight different seasons slash holidays and you will need to go over to images on your Cricut Design Space. This is very easy. Um, the first one I searched was for a flower. This will be for our spring changeable and I'm just changing the colors to pink and yellow. You can change it to whatever you desire. Um, my next holiday will be Valentine's Day. So we're looking for a Valentine's heart. And again, you can pick whatever image you desire and we're gonna change that to red. Now we're here for Easter. We're gonna find an Easter egg that we like. And once we found our Easter egg, we're also gonna change that to the color that we like. Um, guys, all the images are saved at a size six by six. So now for summertime, we're looking for a sun and we're gonna change the sun to yellow and orange. Also a size six by six. So now we're gonna look for a 4th of July star. And once we found that, we're gonna keep the colors because the colors are great. And we're gonna change that to a six by six. All the images will be a six by six, except for this pumpkin. Um, the pumpkin will be a five by five. I know that I put a six by six in there, but the pumpkin will be a five by five. So now we're looking for a Christmas wreath for our Christmas changeable. And the Christmas wreath will also be a five by five instead of a six by six. Now we're gonna look for, excuse me. Now we're gonna look for a fall leaf for our fall season. And once, once we've found our fall leaf, our fall leaf will also be a five by five. So all the images except for the pumpkin, the Christmas wreath and the fall leaf will be six by six. And the pumpkin and the Christmas wreath and the leaf will be a five by five. So again, I'm just going in, adjusting all the colors, making sure that all my reds that I'm gonna be using will be the same red, so they will be on the same mat. I'm making sure that all my yellow um, are all the same yellow, so, so that all my yellows will be on the same mat. And my oranges will be slightly different. Um, and making sure that my leaf is not red, but it's more so burgundy. So I'm just adjusting the colors. And once you get all your colors adjusted to where that you like them, um, now it's time to make it. So once you've made your project, make sure that you print them out and you weed them out for the next step. So we're gonna be using these discs that I got from Hobby Lobby. These will mimic or represent our O on our sign. And again, they will be found in Hobby Lobby on their wooden owl. Six comes in a pack, so you will need two packs. Our next step will be to spray paint our disc. So I'm using regular white spray paint just to spray paint our disc. And once they dry, you do want to flip the disc over and spray paint the back. So you will spray paint the front of your disc and also the back of your disc with white spray paint. So back to our images, they are all weeded out and cut out as you can see. Each image is cut and weeded out. So now it's time to place them on our disc. Once your disc have dried, make sure that your disc are dry before you place your images onto your disc. I just wanna say, excuse my head scarf. I completely forgot that I had it on during the video. So just disregard my head scarf, guys. Once you're done putting your images on your disc, you wanna go back outside and paint them with this extra clear cover coat. Um, I got this from Home Depot. It's just like a clear coat. It gives it a little shine, a little glazy look, and it also seals your vinyl so that your vinyl can stand through any weather, rain, whatever have you. Um, it makes sure that your vinyl is permanent, like your vinyl won't move. And you wanna paint all your discs with this you don't need a lot of this paint this sealant you don't need a lot just a thin coat will be fine and i'm only painting the front once you're done sealing them with the clear coat you want to let them dry one to two hours after your discs are completely dry you want to add velcro to the back of each disc and i'm just putting a little piece of velcro in the middle of each disc it doesn't matter how you put it on just put it in the middle 
And this is the Velcro that I'm using. I also purchased this from Home Depot. It was only like four bucks or so, and, and it comes with like 12, I think. So it's perfect for this project. You only need one pack. Now that we're done with our holiday slash season changeables, it's time to work on our actual sign. So go over to your Cricut Design Space and look for the font Times New Roman under text and under system. Once you found your font Times New Roman, you wanna make sure that your font is in bold print and we're gonna type out the word home. Once we have typed out the word home, we're gonna highlight the entire word and we're gonna ungroup it. We're gonna ungroup it and then we're gonna move each letter to the side. Now for our sign, we're, we're gonna go over to shapes and we're gonna find a square and we're gonna change the size of the square to eight inches in width and 48 inches in height. And we're also gonna change the color to brown. We're gonna zoom out to 25% so that we can get a better visual of our sign. And then we're gonna change the color of home to white. So highlight each letter and change the color of home to white. Now we're gonna move each letter over to our sign. Each letter should be a six by six. So each letter should be six inches by six inches in size. Once we got all our letters on our board, now we're gonna go over to images and we're gonna type in leaf border. We're gonna find a leaf border to go at the top of our sign and also at the bottom of our sign. And I always love this image, but you do have to ungroup it because it comes as one. So for instance, it's welded, they can't be separated. So to separate them, you wanna go over to shapes, get you a square, and you wanna highlight, um, you wanna go over one of the leaves with the square and then you want to highlight the entire thing and hit slice so that it, it will separate it then you want to drag out each leaf and get rid of each leaf that you don't need that you sliced so now here we are we changed the size of our leaf for our board to a 2.5 inch in height and a 6.5 inch in width and we're going to place one at the top of our board and one at the bottom of the board like so and now you just wanna arrange everything so everything is in the middle and everything has equal space. And um, there's, I have no specific way in how I do this. I just actually, um, I eyeball it. So then once I feel like I have equal space between each letter, I get rid of the brown board. And then I get rid of the O because we will not need the O because that's where our holiday slash season will be. So now I highlighted everything below the M and make sure that it was aligned, centered horizontally, and then I welded it. Again, with the H and the leaf, I went up to align, center horizontally, and I welded it. So we will have two prints as seen under layers on the side. Once you're ready to make it, click make it. Remember, do not mirror your images because you're not ironing anything on. So do not mirror your images. Make sure that you Cut out your images and make sure you weld out your images. Now that my cuts are all cut out, my images are cut out, I am now weeding them. Make sure that you weed around your letters. Do not make the mistake and weed out your letters. You need your letters. Make sure you weed out everything around your letters. Once you have both your cuts weeded, I'm gonna go in with my transfer tape and then I'm gonna add transfer tape on top of my letters so that I can transfer my letters onto my sign. Once you have added your transfer tape on top of your letters, you wanna flip over your image and peel the back off. Don't make the mistake in trying to peel the front. Peel from the back side. And I'm gonna do both of my cuts the exact same way. So for our board I got from Home Depot, it came six feet, but Home Depot cut it for free um, because our sign will be four feet. 
And again, Home Depot will cut your sign down or your board down to any size for free. So to start prepping your board, you will need to sand it to get rid of all oil or any grease or any buildup dirt off of your board so that it will be ready to stain. And once you're done sanding, go over it with a brush or whatever you have to make sure that all the sandings are off your board so that you can stain. Now that it's time to stain, this is the stain that I'm going to be using from Home Depot. You literally only need one coat. So you're going to coat the front and the back of your board with this stain. You want to paint your stain on. I'm using an old white t-shirt. You want to paint it on. And then once you have it covered, you want to go back in with another white t-shirt or lint-free wet rag and wipe it off. You want to wipe the stain off after letting it sit for two minutes. So once you've stained it, you want to let it sit for two to three minutes. And then you want to go back with another clean lint-free lint -free cloth or t-shirt and wipe it off. And you want to repeat these steps for the front and the back. So you want to stain it. Let it sit for two to three minutes. Go back in, wipe the stain off. Make sure you stain all the sides. Let it dry and repeat the same steps for the back of the sign. Once you have stained the back and done the same process for the back, you want to let your sign dry for about an hour to two hours. Now that our sign is dry, um, I brought out our cutouts or our home, our images that say home. I brought them out and I just have them flipped over, not on the sticky side, on our board so that I can align them. So this is what I do. I flip them over on the back side, on the non-sticky side, so that I can get them in place so that when I flip them over, they will be perfectly aligned and centered on the board. Once I feel like I have the word center, I take a ruler and I make sure that my ruler is straight like so, so that I can make sure that my images again are laid perfectly in the center and will be in a straight line. You don't want your letters to come out slant or cricket because it will throw the entire sign off. So just kind of pay attention to what I'm doing, how I'm using the ruler, you know, to make sure that I line everything up perfectly. Also guys, take your time peeling off your transfer tape because you, you wanna make sure everything is stuck to your board and is secure. So take your time when peeling off your transfer tape. Once everything looks perfect and it's stuck to your board, I go back in just to make sure that there are no air bubbles and everything is secured down. So once you've got everything secured down, you're gonna go back in with that clear coat that we used on our disc for our season. You wanna pour that on a sign as well so that we can seal the vinyl onto the board. You don't need a thick layer, you just need one small thin coat and we're gonna coat the front of our board and we're also gonna coat the back of the board. This stuff takes about an hour to two hours to dry. So once you've covered your entire board with this clear coat, sealing your vinyl onto your board, you wanna let it dry for one to two hours and then you wanna do the back side and let the back side dry for one to two hours. This clear coat gives your board a shine and it also seals your vinyl. So again, it's gonna give your board a shine and it's also gonna seal your vinyl. And you wanna make sure that you cover the front of your board as well as the back of the board with this clear coat. And again, it takes about one to two hours to dry, but it is very important that you use this on a board so that your sign or your board can withstand any weather because again, it's gonna be outside on your porch. So make sure that you cover the entire sign, front and back. And I'm not painting the back right now, I'm just making sure because it's dripping onto the back, but 
I'm going to actually flip it over and do the same thing once the front dries. It just won't be on video. Once your board is completely dry front and back, you want to take one of your discs, doesn't matter which disc, and you want to put a dot of white paint in the center of your Velcro. So this is a trick to make sure that you get your O perfectly between the H and the M. So once you put the paint on the Velcro, you wanna align where your season or your O is gonna be, and it's gonna leave that white dot on your board. So that's that white dot on your board, that's where you wanna add your last pieces of Velcro so that you can Velcro your seasons onto your board, if that makes sense. So you're gonna use this Velcro and, and lay it down around or on that white dot. It has to be on that white dot so that when you go to change your seasons, your seasons will be perfectly in the center between the H and the M. Okay, now I'm gonna take my disc and I'm gonna attach it to the Velcro on the board just to make sure that everything is perfect, everything is in line, and everything looks great and everything is centered. And I think we aced this job. I think it came out great. And the sign is actually done. So what I'm gonna do is move this table out of the way so I can stand it up so y'all can see. Um, the sign came out great. And this is the end of the video, guys. You are done with your sign, but before we go, I'm just going to give you a little short clip of how the seasons change. So enjoy this video. And again, guys, your sign is done. It's, it's a four foot porch sign with eight changeable season slash holidays. I think it came out great. Just follow the video step by step. Take your time and everything will come out perfect, I promise. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye, guys.